this video, I'm gonna tell you why I chose to be an engineer. And this is not a fairy tale or follow your dreams kind of story. Although you'll see towards the end it did become one, but this is a good story. It will teach you how the real world works, what a real world economy is and what it demands. All right, let's get to it. So initially, I did not wanna be an engineer. I wanted to be a writer or a filmmaker or a musician. Growing up, and especially through middle school, I was always a lot more interested in arts than sciences. And I was looking at what jobs I can get with writing or music or film directing. I quickly realized that with my skills and level of commitment to these things, I really enjoyed doing them as hobbies and could not really Really see myself doing a career out of them especially since as a writer it's probably very hard to become like a science fiction writer so i just came to the decision that i'm better off keeping these things as hobbies so i looked around for what other people are doing my uncles my cousins my friends and i thought about what i really value in a career and then i thought about what the economy values what the real world wants what's in demand and what pays well and the thing that i value the most is helping people doing something that impacts other people the economy values people who can solve problems and, and then i looked at engineering and engineering seemed like short four years and pays well, you don't have to be in too much debt. And actually, even if you want to go to medical school, you could major in engineering and then later apply to medical school. So I said, okay, bingo, seems like the major for me. All right, so now the question came to be is what engineering should I do? There's too many branches. And I started experimenting. I started out with mechanical. And then one semester in, I was like, yeah, this is not the most exciting thing. I need a little more excitement. So then I switched to aerospace because things that fly are pretty cool. And again, I realized that aerospace is just mechanical engineering with wings. In other words, it's still based on the same physics mechanics, which is mainly le dealing with like large thing and i don't know like didn't strike too much excitement in me i think medicine is cool i think the human body is pretty cool why don't i do biomedical and then i switched to biomedical engineering that was my third semester i realized it was a very new degree and it was like a jack of all trades degree where you learn a little bit of everything but you don't really end up with any concrete skills and then one time i was walking in the library and i stumbled upon a bunch of people who were looking at like very strange looking drawings that looked very cool and fascinating these drawings were circuits and these people were studying electrical engineering and through talking to them i said okay wow this looks pretty cool why don't i try that and then my fourth semester i switched to electrical engineering. And with electrical engineering, something magical happened. First thing I started learning about is the concept of electric fields and magnetic fields and charges and all these kind of invisible, arbitrary, incredibly artistic and imaginative concepts. To me, that was just something that's so fascinating. I, I immediately gained interest in these kind of concepts and I could visualize them. And the nice thing about the concepts in electrical engineering is because everything is so invisible, you kind of get to see the world in your own way, which is very cool. I decided to do my work in a field that is creative and imaginative and that is space. So I joined a space lab in my undergrad and that's really what I learned every Everything, about electrical engineering or about, about satellites or space or orbits. And then I interned at a private space company and then bam, I interned at NASA. That was a moment in life where I had never even imagined it would be possible. So I did the NASA internship, that was my senior year of college. And then I came back and I was like, man, this electrical engineering field is actually becoming more interesting. And I think I want to learn more. So then I decided to go to graduate school. And one of the reasons is I wanted to do study abroad. So then I went and I talked to the professor who's in charge of study abroad. And I noticed he's a professor of electrical engineering. He was working on medicine and space and high-speed electronics. Seemed like probably the coolest professor I've ever met. And then I asked him, hey, can I work for you? Now, unlike many people in undergrad who would always like dismiss my ideas as someone who's like very scattered or kind of all over the place, this professor actually saw value in that and gave me a lot of freedom and creativity and allowed me to explore the research topics I'm interested in. And I really liked that. And I fell in love with research. The idea of solving problems that have not been solved before, and not just that, but asking questions that other people have not asked before. That's really the core idea behind research. And the cool thing is once you make a discovery or you invent something, Thing, or you come up with an idea and you want to share it with the rest of the scientific community, you have to write a research paper. That's another opportunity to be creative and use nice figures and visuals and write your idea and convey it in a way that is appealing to other people. Then after that, I realized my love for helping people should not stop at engineering. And I realized I really like education a lot too. And I got this especially from working as a tutor and a teaching assistant. And I decided to write a short book to help engineering students, especially studying electrical engineering, which I'm going to put a link for a free PDF below if you're interested. And now I decided to start this channel, teach other people what I know. Now the key takeaway Away from this video is that waiting for the perfect career idea to come to you before you pursue anything is a really bad approach. What has worked for me is identifying what I find valuable and what the economy views val as valuable and finding some middle ground and just starting there. And to me, engineering is the perfect place for that because even if I decide that I don't want to be an engineer anymore, having gone through the engineering training is something that is amazing. It has wired my brain, solve problems, identify variables and see what can be fixed, what can be improved. Very often when my friends or when anybody introduces me to new ideas, is. My brain is automatically wired to how can I improve that? How can I improve that? How can I solve that problem? That's something engineering teaches you. And it's a very beautiful skill to have. And I don't know, instead of making Hollywood movies, I'm making these videos, which hopefully are helping you guys. So do I regret studying engineering, even though initially I was not passionate about it? Absolutely not. Did I eventually become passionate about engineering? Absolutely, yes. All right, so now you tell me about you. Why did you choose engineering? Or why are you thinking about choosing engineering? And what do you think you can do to make the most out of it? You can leave in the comment below. That being said, I'll see you in the next video. Peace, love.